Please welcome back Simon Jones. Morning, everybody. I've managed three days in a row not to trip on that step, which was my biggest fear, so I win so far. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone, to day three. Um, hopefully last night was a little less wild um, than the previous night. Um, it was great to see so many of you here at the mix of this room. It was really buzzing. Um, we've got no stats or announcements this morning, so we're going to get straight into it. And I want to tell you a cool little Hollywood story. Who doesn't like that? So the latest in the John Wick series, um, chapter three, uh, is a neo-thriller which plays out um, against visually stunning backdrops. And one environment from the third act was particularly challenging to design. The office sequence seen here um, was a huge multi-million dollar physically built set made almost entirely from glass. And that's a heck of a lot of glass, as I think you can see. And the set was to be the location of a number of complex fight sequences between Keanu Reeves and his on-screen adversaries. And bringing these into Unreal allowed the actors, the directors, and the cinematographers to use VR to scout the scenes for optimal shots and visualize everything in the film. And one special advantage to the production team was the ability to engage with the stunt actors um, ahead of um, the scenes before their arrival on set for the first time. And this film premiered in May this year. I don't know if you've seen it. And to date, it's taken over $330 million at the box office. It's a pretty impressive project. And yesterday, um, I previewed the evolution of BBC Sports flagship program match of the day. And our next speaker is going to tell us about the unique challenges presented uh, by broadcast TV. But let's have a quick look at how it all started. Welcome to Match of the Day, the first of a weekly series coming to you every Saturday. I've always wanted to follow that, that theme tune. I can now say I feel know what Gary Lineker feels like, anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm John Murphy, I'm creative director at uh, BBC Sport, and um, I'm just here today to kind of give a bit of a, uh, an overview of how we've started using this technology for our, you know, essentially our uh, match of the day, which uh, in the UK is a kind of a, an iconic brand, obviously nearly 60 years old as a program now. So it's a bit of a leap for us to, to you know, put match of the day in a, in a virtual environment. Um, well, what I'm here today is, I'm obviously creative director, we're at the very beginning of this technology, and obviously what I've seen here over the last three days is pretty mind-blowing stuff. And it just shows like kind of where, where we can get to, but obviously we're very early in our stage at the moment, but um, I just wanted to kind of just give you a bit of an overview of, of, of how we got there and, and how we did it. So initially, so three years ago, we were looking at a new set for Match of the Day. Um, and we were looking at, we were at IBC in Amsterdam, and we were looking at uh, LED technology uh, for new screens and everything. And for the first time, uh, we saw on a stand, we saw Unreal Engine being used in a virtual set, and it was, wow, this, we could actually, this could work. We could do a virtual studio for you know, the photorealism, uh, the keying that was, that was being on, on display. Um, and for the first time, yeah, we thought that this, we could make this work. Now, obviously, the, the, the main thing about it is obviously innovating and it being a, a you know, refreshing the studio. But what it also does, it gave us the opportunity for, for one to go into a smaller studio space uh, than what we had, um, which, you know, in, in terms of uh, budgets and everything else, help, helps in that way. And during that trial process, when we were working with our partners, uh, studio partners, Doc10, trialing the technology, um, we actually stumbled upon an idea for actually our World Cup in Russia in 2018. Now, the studio in Russia, was a, what happened with that was, was that for the, it's the only thing in this whole presentation that wasn't using Unreal Engine, but we, we stumbled on it by doing the trialing with Unreal Engine. And what I want to do is I'm going to show you a quick video, well, little video, just expl explaining how we did the World Cup set in Russia before I go on about the actual Match of the Day studio. 
Bianchi, a goalkeeper we'll never forget. Hello and welcome to BBC Sports World Cup 2018 studio situated in the iconic Red Square in Russia. For the past few weeks we've been watching the magic of the World Cup unfold but what you may not know is that we have been busy making our very own bit of magic happen right here in the studio. With the latest in broadcast technology and a fusion of technical and creative minds alike we have been able to transform our studio into this from this. So how does it all work? Well, the sorcery begins with the cameras themselves. Each studio camera is fitted with a small infrared camera which is directed up towards the ceiling. The ceiling has been covered with reflective markers which the infrared camera can see at all times. The tracking system uses this view of the markers to calculate the exact position and orientation of each camera within the studio with incredible accuracy. Once we know exactly where each camera is in the studio, we are able to create some exciting visual effects. Our large LED walls feature a stylized 3D representation of Moscow, which is being rendered in real time by a powerful broadcast graphics system. As the camera moves around, the infrared tracking device tells the graphics engine precisely where it is within the studio. The graphics engine then uses this information to change the perspective of the 3D scene to match exactly how it should look as if it were being viewed from that point in the studio. On top of our virtual LED displays, we are able to overlay augmented reality set extensions, which enables us to expand our studio space into an immersive 3D environment, which has been especially designed to host our very own live virtual window into each of the stadiums used to host a World Cup match. And if that wasn't enough, the Reverse Studio has also been kitted out with a wide variety of augmented reality content graphics, such as team formations, player stats, maps and group tables that we can use to help provide the most engaging coverage of the 2018 Football World Cup. Uh, well, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this behind-the-scenes tour of our studio. Imagine what we'll have in store for you at the 2022 World Cup. Now, there was nothing necessarily new about the technology driving that, but what that did for us, for, for this project, was firstly, it engaged production. So the production teams for the, for the first time using that in Russia and using virtual technology and, and augmented technology, they, for the first time, they, it, well, it worked, and it actually gave a really strong editorial message. So obviously, there was, it wasn't just, we just weren't using it for just for the sake of, of using augmented reality, it had a meaning to it. So that gave us a, that, that was a really good platform for us in terms of engage, engaging production on this to actually go into a virtual studio. So in terms of the project for, 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 for this set, is that um, not only do we have Match of the Day, but across the weekend we have four football programs. And we have Match of the Day, which is obviously the flagship program. We have Match of the Day 2 on a Sunday night. But then on a Saturday daytime, we have a program called Football Focus and one called Final Score. So it was not only, even though Match of the Day was the, the prime focus, we had to have a set that kind of fitted those four different elements. Um, so first, firstly, and there's many people in this room today, so Doc 10 is where we have our studio, and they're kind of, so obviously we've worked really closely with them on, on this project. Also, Alston Elliott Graphics are our, are our graphic suppliers, um, and they also did the set design for this project and obviously all the development of the uh, augmented reality and data uh, into Unreal Engine. Uh, and then in the technology side of it, uh, we're using a platform called Zero Density, uh, which obviously is the a platform uh, running Unreal Engine. And then the tracking system is Mosis uh, Star Trackers. So that was kind of the, that was kind of the, the, the nutshell of the people involved in it. 
Um, in terms of the design, we, we based it around a, a stadium for all four programs. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of time and effort spent in that. Um, I think uh, we probably caught the design back and forth was probably over a, a nine month period. Um, the real, the other thing about this was the the studio we are in. It's a set and strike studio, so we we don't own the studio, and we also share it with BBC Children's. Therefore, it's a green screen studio that gets taken out after every weekend and then put back in again, which as people can probably imagine working in this field, it is quite challenging. Um, luckily, um, Doc 10 take a lot of that bit of it from us, so it's, but it, and they do a great job of it, but yeah, it's, it, it does cause issues, or did cause issues. Um, the other thing around the, the, the project itself was some of the obstacles and challenges that we faced. Now, one thing that we, I thought we did is that we actually we concentrated so much on the virtual set that we actually took our eye off the ball about the actual real <laughs> elements. So there's only a desk and a base, but actually that desk and base gave us so many headaches at the end of it because of too much gloss paint on it, too much ref reflectivity off, off the tops of the desk. Um, and it was, it was a bit of a, we should have been thinking about this beforehand. We didn't put enough, enough thought into that. So that was, that was, that was one major issue. The talent is another one. So obviously, they, you know, talent, when they're doing the program, they like to be in a kind of an environment which, which they're comfortable. Uh, and so actually telling them they're going to a green box from when they've been in the traditional set didn't go down too well. Happily, everyone's on board with it now. Um, but that was another one that we had to kind of do a lot of, uh, a lot of you know, helping them along the way, shall we say. And then I've just got this video I'm going to run while I'm talking about, which shows, which Olsen Elliott actually put together, which just shows the kind of the, how the studio and the process of it's, it's working. So obviously, as you can see, this is kind of our, 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 our gallery. And then obviously with your, your camera technology and everything, this is, the actual, this is the actual studio, the green screen studio. Um, You'll see in a minute actually how small it is and how much how much space that the cameras have got you. So there you go. That's we've literally tried to cover as much green as we possibly could and get the cameras in it also. The reason we wanted to do that is that so we, we can have standing positions as well as obviously the central seating positions. Um, as you can see, this is kind of a very mixed bag of all the four different programs. And, and then here, the, the ability we have, which we want to kind of innovate more with, is actually being able to go into the stu stadium with a, with a virtual camera uh, from the studio camera. Um, as I say, all of, the, all of the, the Unreal Engine side of it, in terms of the studio side of it, is done by the Doc10 VFX team. And then all the augmented reality, all the data-driven graphics there, has been done by Alston Elliott, and they've, they've, they've done that in Unreal Engine. So the beauty it gives us as well is that you know we can we can be really creative with our kind of backdrops and and bring in uh, screens in and and badges, um, and as I was, as I mentioned earlier, you know we have got so much to do on this still. We are you know we're nowhere near where we actually want to be on this, but to get to get to this point in a in a what was a very traditional broadcast uh, studio and actually you know, make it work was, was a really kind of big thing for us and all of the other people involved. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's just, it's just about us developing with Unreal Engine, uh, getting to know it more, uh, understanding it more. Uh, also, we want internally within the BBC, obviously we're very reliant on our partners and suppliers at the moment, um, but obviously internally in the BBC, we just need to start to learn it more also. Um, and that's, that's, another, that's the next step along the way for us. But yeah, as you can see, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, you know, there's so many possibilities with it that we can, we can go and do with this studio. Um, and it just gives us that flexibility going forward.
and then the ne and then the next thing is kind of just that whole photorealistic look and lighting and and everything else and just kind of that's just what we've got to, we've got to build on so that's just a that was just a sort of background piece on that now for the future for us as i've said it's just about development you know we want to just develop with this technology more and more and just keep on growing with it um, at the moment it's 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 really exciting but as i said but at the same time it's quite difficult for us keeping up with it at the moment so we just got to we're at the very beginning of it and so we've got to innovate and develop the current studios we've got but then we're now looking at our other events remote productions uh future events when we have to go off site to, to different locations you know do we you know, do we have to go with a full studio to, a, to a, an event the other side of the world? Can we do it all back, in, back here in the UK in our base? Um, all of that is open to us now, uh, and, that's, and that's why it's really exciting. So I'm just going to sign off now, say thank you for everyone for your time. I'm going to play a, a little behind-the-scenes piece that we did uh, on the studio, but obviously it's, it's, it's more people involved with it. And... Um, people from production talking about the actual project itself. So, thank you. <laughs> oh look, it's green, what a shot. We've had some big changes on Match of the Day because we're actually moving into a smaller studio, but in terms of the virtual world, it will actually look a lot larger. <laughs> Now, it is very different to what we've done before because, even though it looks incredibly new, if I click my fingers, this is what our world really looks like. It's uh, essentially a kingdom of green velvet. When we were looking at LED screens and everything else, we discovered a new technology, which is all from the gaming industry. For the first time, with the quality of keying and rendering, we thought Virtual Studio was a viability for us, and the, and the reason for that as well is that it gave us the opportunity to kind of have a different set between all the four football programmes. We're not all just sitting within one environment. This is a games engine. This, this is um, Unreal Engine. It's um, most famously used at the moment for Fortnite. Unreal Engine was born in the world of video games. Over the last few years, a whole host of other industries have started to use our real-time technology. The Match of the Day Virtual Studio represents a real cutting-edge technology and they're pushing the envelope with this virtual studio. The Premier League is back for a new season. New stories, new faces and a bit of a new look. Starting with the blank page that is a virtual studio and uh, all that can be done is a bit sort of daunting and it's taken us quite a while to work out how to turn a stadium into a studio. All of the programme directors have been working with the virtual designer on each of the models and working within lighting and making sure that every programme has its own distinctive brand. The ability to mould the world and have it change according to what's going on, so for example monitor positions and screens and how they kind of appear and move around and and don't have to be in shot so we can have a very vast studio design. And it looks at the moment as if I'm the only person in here, but if we flick our camera around, actually there, behind the velvet curtain, there's Sean filming us, filming him. In terms of presenters and guests, they have a hard set, so they've still got a real desk with real monitors inside. But then in terms of everything else, it's completely virtual. So all of the screens, that they aren't actually there, they're not seeing them. Um, so it's making sure that the eye lines are right for all of the presenters and guests and that they have some form of a monitor that, where they can see what we're actually transmitting. There is one sort of golden rule which we all have to obey, which is understandable really, you cannot wear green because, as I can demonstrate with this lovely green cloth, if you do, you essentially disappear. The biggest thing with a virtual studio is that we can develop. Um, obviously from where we are now, the idea is just to develop and develop and develop on top of that. And then also at the end of each season, then we have the ability to kind of give the sets another refresh rather than just having to be based in the, you know, the same set for five, six years. I think it would be 
crazy not to take advantage of you know, the fact you can update things. We would likely see a lot more progression, some more ideas coming to play. I think that's, it's exciting. Thank you for enjoying our little tour round and we will see you throughout the season. From BBC Sport, goodbye. What an amazing project. I think if you're going to roll in some new technology in a, into a TV show live on air, I'm not sure you'd pick the world's most watched football show. So major kudos to the team and all the partners here that have delivered that project. And I'm very lucky enough to be part of the sort of future vision of that and the, the ambitions that are going to come. And I think it's going to be, a, be phenomenal. I, I also was invited up to the set just a few weeks ago and um, staggered how small and efficient this, this production is. And um, that allows the team to invest in the digital side so much more. So it's, it's really inspiring. Thank you, John. Great presentation. Um, OK, let's have a quick look at the automotive industry uh, before we move on. I mean, I think those of you that follow Unreal closely will not be surprised to learn that for high-end marketing and retail experiences, Unreal is the dominant platform used. And here you can see Audi, who rolled out over 1,000 dealerships last year with their um, virtual experience technology. Um, recently, we broke the story of BMW rolling out their experience to the whole global network. Uh, McLaren is now at retail. And yesterday, we told you a little bit about General Motors and their online pixel stream Corvette Stingray project. Um, and outside this room, just outside there, you can see Rotor Studios Toyota Lexus project, um, which has been phenomenal at retail in Australia and now Canada. But I want to tell you some more unusual stories from automotive that are very inspiring. Ford's event team, Imagination, were challenged by Ford Marketing to develop an experience for the Detroit Motor Show to show off the new capabilities of the 2019 Ford Explorer. And they wanted an in-car ride experience, but they wouldn't have an actual car. Imagination brought in Australian storytellers S1T2 to help create an experience which mapped a real ride in the old Explorer uh, with visuals from the new one. And this required some pretty complex tracking in a frankly hostile environment like a convention center. And the final experience mapped a real drive on a real undulating track in the exhibition center with a virtual experience depicting the new car. And as you can see from some of the footage here, it, it got a lot of worldwide coverage on TV, which was a phenomenal result. And London-based agency Cassette, they created an interactive experience to communicate Magna and BMW's vision for the future of autonomous driving. And the experience was developed for an interactive table that detected a 3D printed car when it was placed upon it. And guests could maneuver the car to manipulate the on-screen content, creating an interactive and engaging, sort of engaging new format um, so that people could learn about the future of driving. Obviously, using Unreal, this allowed the team to deliver a project with rich and complex, engaging content in a short time frame. Um, of course, while maintaining really uh, high quality finish. It's pretty cool. I'm desperate to get one of those in the office. It's fun to play with. Now, amazing projects like these are featured in our build series of industry events. And the last one took place in Munich, and it was the third year we've run that event. And that's the one that's featured in this video here that we've just put out. And we were pleased to have speakers from Audi, BMW, McLaren, Mercedes, and Daimler, and also a story from Nissan. And last year, we opened Build for Automotive in Detroit, the home of automotive. And two months ago, we ran a Build London for Architecture event at the uh, historic Royal Institute of British Architects. So keep an eye out. We haven't announced our 2020 event schedule yet, but keep an eye out. They're well worth attending. And you really get a chance to meet some of the most influential people um, in the industry, lots of thought leaders. The team asked me very specifically to th take a moment to thank you guys uh, for your ger generosity in attending the event for three whole days. We know you've got busy schedules and that's a lot of time. Um, the feedback from our trainers is, is that you guys have been fantastic, you've been engaging, you've been asking challenging questions that have kept them on their toes and they love that. I also want to thank the speakers over the last three days that, for traveling really quite far and wide um, to be with us to tell their stories. And of course the epic staff for running such a slick event. We've all enjoyed having you here. It's been a pleasure for me um, to host and to be able to speak to many of you to, to learn your projects over the last few days. I hope you enjoyed the last day, and we hope to see you all at Unreal Fest in Prague. Thank you.